Okay, sorry, sorry. I know you want to see more technical stuff, but I think it's important to hear a bit more about why you would even use a cryptocurrency hardware wallet and what you protect against. What's your threat model? These devices promise that they are more secure than an alternative, but threats are multifaceted and I want to explore this a bit more. When you unpack the ledger, you will find a paper in there called the recovery sheet that is basically intended to back up your private key by writing down the mnemonic phrase that can be used to derive your actual private key from. Basically, by indirection, it is your private key. Now, why would Ledger, this supposedly awesome, secure wallet, tell you to write down your secret key on a paper? If the paper is more secure, then why would you buy a Ledger? And if the paper is less secure than the Ledger, then why would you write it down? This comes down to the threat model and the huge amount of different situations you have to consider. The paper wallet and the hardware wallet cover different aspects and are thus in some way difficult to compare. I mean, we can compare them, but we can't rank them. Which one is better totally depends on the given situation. The advantage of a paper wallet is that everybody understands the strength and weakness of paper. Even Amish understand the limitations of a secret written on a piece of paper. And this is a huge advantage. You understand that you shouldn't carry it around in your pocket because you could lose it, which means you definitely shouldn't travel with it. It's also obviously not a digital device, so it can't get malware. You also understand that if somebody breaks into your house, they could steal it. And so you also know that a small mini safe might prevent simple thieves, but also that a huge secure built-in safe is better to protect it. But also that your kit could shoulder surf you when you enter the code to the safe. You also understand that paper can burn in a fire or be destroyed by water damage. But also that every time you want to access cryptocurrencies, you need to enter the private key into some device to perform the cryptographic computations. And those could have malware. You get the point. You understand. Probably every kid understands the limitations and advantages of paper. Because of that, Ledger encourages you to write it down on paper and paper is probably the easiest to understand method to store a private key because everybody understands what it takes to keep that safe. That's why it's a great way to back up your key, but it's also obvious that it might not be true for everybody. For example, if you travel a lot, then where could you keep that paper safe? It has limitations and I hope that makes sense. Now, what about these hardware wallets? Ledger, Trezor, KeepKey, Bitfi? In a very simple sense, they are devices that somehow store your secret key, but also perform the cryptographic algorithms so the key never leaves the device and for example malware on your computer can't steal your coins. So this is probably the biggest threat model that hardware wallets want to cover. Protect you from malware you might get on your internet connected laptop because you downloaded cracked games bundled with a Trojan after you put all your money into bitcoins instead. But this is simpler said than done. There are a lot of different ways how this can be achieved so let's quickly look at a few hardware wallets and what they consider their main features. Ledger supports different apps to support different cryptocurrencies. Those apps run on the secure element of the ledger. It has a built-in display to verify transactions. It has buttons to confirm transactions. Access to the ledger is protected by a pin, which apparently erases your data if it was entered wrong three times. It also supports Fido, Fido, which is something entirely different but super nice. I also use U2F for many of my accounts. And then the most funny feature is the backup and restore feature that your accounts are backed up on a recovery sheet. So this paper is one of the notable six features coming with the ledger. Pretty funny. Trezor has more transparency due to open source. It also features a display and buttons to verify transactions and you also get a paper to write down your recovery key. It also has a pin and passphrase entry to prevent simple access to your wallet. And KeepKey also offers you to back up your recovery sentence on a paper. Also, it is protected by a pin entry. And the display also allows you to verify transactions before sending them. And apparently it's virus and malware proof. And there are probably more, but the point is not to show you all the available commercial products. I just wanted to show you that the idea is generally the same. 
So let's talk quickly about why they are sharing those same traits. Those were backup and recovery by using a paper wallet, secure storage of your private key, a display to show some critical information, some kind of buttons or input, and a pin or passphrase. First of all, all digital devices can be destroyed, they can break or can be lost, especially because these hardware wallets are intended to be carried around with you. So it's important that you have backups and maybe a backup of your backup or some multi-sig setup where you give different trusted entities different pieces. So that's a general threat everybody knows. Now the ledger for example uses a secure element which is a special chip which is intended to be a secure chip. There's a bit of secrecy around it what they actually do but that's just how it is. And you know from previous video the ledger has a secure chip and an insecure chip. The Trezor and the Keep Key just have a simple non-secure chip. But that doesn't mean that much. The problem with the ledger was not that it's not a secure chip, but that they don't care that you could run malicious code on it. Then we have displays and buttons. And that becomes super important when we talk about the probably most important case, malware on your computer. There are two possibilities for a regular software wallet. First is you just have the private key somewhere on disk. Or the second option is that the key is encrypted and requires a passphrase or pin to decrypt first. In either case, the key is at some point accessible for malware on your computer to steal it. These hardware wallets are intended to be used together with the software on your computer and so even if a malware would spoof the address shown to you on your computer or try to create transactions without your knowledge, the device will show this request to you and you can accept or decline it. And all hardware devices kind of fulfill the same purpose. Offload the private key and crypto calculations to a second device so that your coins are safe even if your regular internet connected computer is compromised. Now if you trust your machine to never catch malware or never catch malware that targets your coins, then making sure your private key is encrypted when it's not used is probably enough. If your device is stolen or forgot to lock your laptop, your coins are safe. But if you want an additional layer because you can't trust your machine, you can offload that stuff on a second device. And you could totally use a Raspberry Pi or an old laptop that will never be connected to the internet or firewall and only allow to connect to the crypto networks. Then do the crypto calculations on there and maybe have full disk encryption with a passphrase to prevent access in case it's stolen. It's a simple clumsy hardware wallet, but solving the same threat. But as you may slowly understand, then why would you not just use a Raspberry Pi or why would you even want a ledger or a treasure instead of a keep key? Well, there are nuances to everything. A huge factor is that it has nothing to do with security and that's convenience. These hardware wallets are just super convenient. I personally don't mind to spend money on something that is less hassle and maybe some wallets support some obscure scam coins that you really want. So from, from this higher level perspective, you could use any hardware wallet. They all implement pretty much the same thing and aim to protect against the same threats. So why not just get the one you feel the coolest with? Except BitFi wallet. Do not buy the BitFi wallet. So the other day, a new hardware wallet appeared on the scene, the BitFi wallet, heavily endorsed by Charlatan John McAfee. That alone should already ring your alarm bells. But... I got baited into buying two for doing some research because of the ridiculous claim that it's unhackable and they offer 100,000 US dollars. Shortly after I placed my order, I found the bug bounty rules, what exactly they require for a reward. They say they put some coins on it and if you successfully extract the coins and empty the wallet, this would be considered a successful hack. So basically they only consider losing or stealing of the wallet a valid threat. But that's completely bullshit. That's just one possible situation. The BitFi wallet prides itself with open source, which is just a charade because only the key derivation algorithm is open source. As you can see here, you plug in your passphrase along some other stuff and the private key falls out at the end. So even if you completely get access to the data on the wallet, you have no chance. You need to brute force that. And so even putting your regular encrypted wallet on your parents malware infected machine is equally safe. Because to decrypt it, you need the passphrase. 
That thread model is so stupid, especially because that device is just a shitty repurposed Android phone with Wi-Fi. So that doesn't scream confidence at all. They say it's unhackable because at least they understand basic math and crypto and know that data is worthless without the passphrase. So they structured this bullshit bounty around it. And the fact that maybe you can get malware on it and steal it as soon as the user unlocks the private key doesn't count. Ugh, makes me so angry. I really hope somebody finds a flaw in the key derivation which lowers the brute force search space drastically. Anyway, so we talked about the general more high level goals, but as I just hinted at with the Bitfee wallet, there are small nuances to everything. For example, in some way, the ledger with the secure element might offer much stronger protection than just a regular chip storing the key like in the Trezor. Though hopefully both devices have the key encrypted and derive a decryption key from the user input. But then also the ledger allows running apps on the secure element, which is sandboxed and offers only restricted syscalls, but there were issues with that before, so I'm not sure if that was a good architecture choice. Then you have the super easy ability to run untrusted code on the ledger's unsecure processor, so a malware can spread to the ledger. But as we know from last video, that might not even be problematic. While the Trezor also has an unsecured chip, but at least tries to make getting malicious code on there harder. Another aspect is, and I'm not paranoid, I totally trust Ledger as much as I trust Windows and Google and Apple to not push malicious updates, but theoretically those wallet developers could push a backdoor software update to steal your key. And then there might be even smaller nuances. How fast does the hardware wallet lock itself if you walk away from your machine? How long can a passphrase or pins be and how easy is it to enter them? Are the keys extractable from memory if somebody does a cold boot or somehow accesses the memory while the device has still power versus when it's powered off? And much, much more. And the problem here is that I don't even ever know what to do now. All these hardware devices are extremely complex. Just because I spent now several days with the ledger, I have a better understanding of the architecture and can criticize and praise it in certain aspects. And I can't do that for any other wallet. And I'm even pretty experienced with IT security compared to the average person. How do you expect people to use these devices well? And this is where we come back to the paper wallet. The paper is so easy to understand and it's easy to be confident when handling it. And even if I have some criticism about the ledger because I understand better the possible weaknesses, right now I would probably prefer a ledger over another wallet just because the research into it empowers me as a potential user to use its potential and pay attention to the situations where I don't trust it. I mean, I don't really have use for a hardware wallet anyway, but that's an interesting perspective for me. And to become a bit political, that's why it's so important that we have to fight for more laws protecting researchers and allowing reverse engineering because these things are so complex without being allowed to look under the hood and check if their marketing claims are correct, we are lost. So I hope this unstructured rant helped you a bit more in understanding the complex threat models and how to analyze if a security product really does what you hope it does. Next video we will start with opening up the Ledger Nano S.